What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Hey, folks. How you doing? This is Mr. Warmack. I'm definitely in the building. And today, I got a treat for you today. I'm going to give you, I'm going to talk about something that, uh, your next president, Donald Trump, has talked about. And if you get ready for my uh, little quote I want to give you, four, three, two, one, here we go. I'm just going to get real. We're going to talk about how blacks and the GOP and the DNC. And we're going talk about what Trump said was fact or fiction. So without further ado, let's go to Trump. No group in America has been more harmed by Hillary Clinton's policies than African Americans. No group, no group. If Hillary Clinton's goal was to inflict pain on the African American community, she could not have done a better job. Disgrace. Tonight, I'm asking for the vote of every single African-American citizen in this country who wants to see a better future. The inner cities of our country have been run by the Democratic Party for more than 50 years. Their policies have produced only poverty, joblessness, failing schools, and broken homes. It's time to hold Democratic politicians accountable for what they have done to these communities. At what point do we say enough? At what point do we say enough? It's time to hold failed leaders accountable for their results, not just their empty words over and over again. Look at what the Democratic Party has done to the city as an example, and there are many others, of Detroit. Forty percent of Detroit's residents, 40 percent, live in poverty. Half of all Detroit residents do not work and cannot work and can't get a job. Detroit tops the list of most dangerous cities in terms of violent crime, number one. This is the legacy of the Democratic politicians who have run this city. This is the result of the policy agenda embraced by crooked Hillary Clinton. Thirty-three thousand emails gone. The only way to change results is to change leadership. We can never fix our problems by relying on the same politicians who created our problems in the first place. A new future requires brand new leadership. Look how much African American communities have suffered under democratic control. To those I say the following. What do you have to lose by trying something new like Trump? What do you have to lose? Trump, 
I say it again, what do you have to lose? Look, what do you have to lose? You're living in poverty, your schools are no good, you have no jobs, 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose? And at the end of four years, I guarantee you that I will get over 95% of the African-American vote. I promise you. Now, Trump made several references to the Democratic controlled cities in America. And yes, he was right. He was speaking to a crowd in, uh, in the Detroit suburbs up in Michigan. And he was telling about how most Democratic cities are this, that, and the third. But if you look at the numbers, he's absolutely right. And this is what a lot of so-called African-American people on YouTube, such as myself, have been telling you. You give your vote to the DNC. Now, I don't care who you vote for. It's your vote. So, you know, vote who you want to vote for. But my point is, you give your vote to people who ha don't have your best interests at heart. Now, I agree with Donald Trump on a lot of stuff that he says. Now, people are going to come at you and say... Well, the man's racist. It's, how is he racist? The man runs a business. You cannot run a business in America this day and age with a racist attitude. Look, look, what, look what happened to Chick-fil-A, since you guys want to compare homosexuals so much. Chick-fil-A does not believe in homosexuality. They don't fire homosexuals. He just don't put, he doesn't believe that. Plus, he closes on Sunday. They tried to shut down Chick-fil-A. Did that happen? No. Thank God for the moralistic Americans down south and everywhere else. But the fact remains is Donald Trump is right. Why are you? And I'm gonna put. I'm gonna show you some. We got. We got. We got neat graphics up here now. Why are you gonna sit here and not vote for a party just because the, the DNC tells you not to? Now a lot of you gonna say, "Well, the GOP doesn't do anything for us." Why is the GOP going to extend their hand? Well, that's what, well, this is what they just did just now. They extended their hand out. But why are they going to keep extending their hand, extending their hand, extending their hand to people who aren't going to vote for you? The fact of the matter is the GOP was the black party in the 60s. The GOP was the party for every black American. Martin Luther King was a, was, was a, was a Republican. Malcolm X, whether you like to hear this or not, had Republican values. The fact remains is... The term from the, we, when we took the term from uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, when he said he's going to have, every, and I'm going to paraphrase this, and he did use the word nigger, by the way, but he said well, he's going to have every nigger vote Democratic for the next hundred years, he wasn't lying. And all of a sudden, since then, the Democratic Party has systematically got your, systematically received your vote, and also they, what they did is they tore down the community. Look, look, look now, look at the recessions, look, look at the trade deals we do, look at everything else that the Democrats, the Democrats do not have your best interests in hand. The Democrats, look, 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 look at your favorite Obama here. Everybody, was talk, everybody loved Obama, this and that, and now that he's getting out of office, y'all want to hop the bandwagon and say Obama didn't do anything for black people. Well, number one, whose fault's that? Yours for being dumb enough for not asking for anything. If you don't ask for anything, you should not receive. Now, the, Donald Trump is sticking out his hand. What some African-American so-called leaders need to do is have sit-down talks behind closed doors and talk to him. There's, I mean, I, I, I give fair con credit for talking to the guy. You got to sit down and talk to these people behind closed doors, and you can't tell everybody in the brother like a lot of you Negroes do. A lot of you, if you tell you something, you, next thing you know, the, the whole neighborhood knows, and the hair salon knows, the, the guy selling CDs and bootlegs know, and that's what you can't do. I say you sit down with Donald Trump, you listen to what he has to say. Now, I'm going to put up here a slide pretty soon about the points and the, 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 the points I'm going to bring home to you, and this is why. Because I'm going to show you what your buddy Obama has done. So we'll be back in a second. And here it is, folks. This is the graph I want to explain to you guys. See, we got we got nice numbers over here, and we're working with stuff now. We get a little booster money. This is, you know, you know, Negroes go all out. All of a sudden, they get a little money to spend. You know how that goes. No, nah, but I'm just kidding. But uh, if you look at this, this is the Obama legacy. But you Negroes do not care. Look, look we'll, start at the, we'll start at the top. Where it says 58 percent up, African Americans on food stamps, the Obama legacy, and haven't I talked about this? 58 percent 
up compared to what it was before. 58% people, that's more than half. Although it's 8% more, I mean, it's still more than half. Now, if we go to African Americans in poverty, since Obama came on the, came over, 8.2% it's up. But that's just, and that's just, it, it would have been more if it wasn't for, if, if, let me put it to you this way. If those food stamp numbers were down, that poverty number would be shoot up. So thank God for food stamps in that regard. Not, not, not that you guys are trying to get off. Get, I mean, there are a lot of trying to get to work, but the majority of you are not trying to go to work off of food stamps. So once we clear that, so if that fifty-eight percent number was down, that poverty number would shoot up. Trust me. Now we'll go down to the bottom, bottom row there. African Americans not in the workforce. Nineteen point six percent up. That means almost 20% more during the Obama administration that there are not black people in the workforce. And if you look at the cool game now is, the cool game now is hire all these refugees. See, they're, they're getting slick now because, like, you get, like, everybody here in America is a tax credit. But uh, now they don't want to, they want to hire, they don't, I'm not talking about Mexicans and Africans no more. I'm talking about Warren torn countries are bringing people in there hiring. I see this for myself, so you can't tell me nothing. They do it in my job. I don't mean when I mean I mean when you think about Africa, Africa is a big continent, but they're bringing people from Ghana, they're bringing people from Ethiopia, they're bringing people from from uh, what should we call it, Syria. I mean, I see this my at my job myself, and then they, they don't argue, they don't fuss, they don't fight. They smile, yes sir, they do the job. You know, they just, they skin and grin, and they do it. Okay, now, look at African-American home ownership. Down 4.6%. So, look, if you got 19.6, almost 20% out of the workforce, of course you're going to have a home ownership now. Now, not many of us like to own a home. I can see why. There's, there's too much going on. There's too much money to invest in. Then you lose your job and kaput. But then the proverbial day, and these and these numbers I got from the department. I think the department was the Department of Labor. Look at look at the bottom. I wrote down what, what the department is. But these these are from the government statistics themselves. This is what I've done. I have not made up these stats myself. This is from the, from the own government, you know, numbers. So the fact remains is. Why are you going to still stay with the DNC when they gave you Planned Parenthood? They gave you slavery. They gave you Jesus was the slave ship name. They gave they they done everything to hold you down. They you know they they destroy the cities. They won't invest in the cities. And let me tell you something: if they invest in the cities, the homosexuals are going to take your land over. And anybody living in the cities, all this gentrification, you know, it's what they're doing right now. Well, this is wealthy guy, wealthy people living that moved out to the suburbs. I mean, way out, way out. They're sick of those fucking hour drives now, so they're coming back into the su to the inner city. And let me tell you something, people: if they're spending money in your hood, they're kicking you out because they ain't gonna let they ain't gonna put with the old same old same old. Where you have forty five people standing on a corner asking for five dollars. Now nah, I'd be like, look, we're shipping you out to the suburbs. That's why now in America, the suburbs are about to get fucked up like they are in Chicago. So, at the end of the proverbial day, I can't say nothing bad about what Donald Trump had to say because he is he's, he's right. And the fact remains is, you don't like it because it's Donald Trump. Now, I could care less who says it. Now, is he going to solve the race? He, he, what he did is he just he touched upon something that we don't like to talk about in America, and that is race. Now, is he going to solve the race problem? I don't think Donald Trump can solve the race problem by himself. But at the end of the day, at least you know, at least he's willing to speak on it. Now, anything else, if anything you can't find is, like, not factual, let me know. But these are all guaranteed facts. Now, I'm sure you can nit, nit pick and pick apart every little thing that he says. But at the end of the proverbial day, again, it's facts. And that's the only thing you get mad about. So have a good one. Peace.